Hello everyone, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful rose gold urchin embellished with pearls and crystals and show you how it started as something different and it actually was a big mistake. Hey, whoa, 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 wait, hold up. You mean I was a mistake? Oh, no, no, you weren't a mistake. You were a series of a bunch of mistakes. Yeah, not making me feel any better. You know, sometimes our greatest achievements stem from our biggest ups. I think Aristotle said that. Um, no, he didn't. You know, failure is instructive. The person who really thinks learns quite as much from his failures as from his successes. John Dewey said that. Who the heck is John Dewey? You know, the Buddha said, there are only two mistakes one can make along the road to truth. Not going all the way and not starting. Well, I don't think anyone is going to accuse me of not going all the way with this one. Okay, so I started off with this plaster cast that I made from a soap mold and I decided to cover it in gold leaf. So what I used to glue it down is this Mona Lisa adhesive made specifically for metal leaf and I used this gold leaf that I just picked up on Amazon I believe. Now, if you're gonna make the rose gold urchin as it's shown in the final picture, you can skip this step, but I wanted to show you how to apply it to a stone just in case you ever wanna try it. So if you've never worked with gold leaf, it's really fun, but it's incredibly delicate. And there are a few things that you absolutely have to get right in order for it to work. So the first thing is you want to apply your adhesive in a thin, even coat with no drips or puddles or pools. And you really need to get this uh, dried. It needs to have a tacky finish and that can take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to get it to the right um, dryness. So 15 to 30 minutes is a very long time. Why would I have to wait that long? Well, that's a very good question and I will answer it. Because if you are impatient, like I was, what happens is your wet glue then attaches itself to the bristles of your brush and as you apply the leaf, it also sticks to the brush and comes off. It's a big old mess. Okay, so again, this is not part of the final design. So if you want to skip this part, you can go ahead and move to section and it'll pick up where you need to pick up. But I wanted to show you this just so that you can see how it sticks to the surface. And it actually looks really, really nice on a flat surface. Um, so I'm going to use this technique with other stones, but um, yeah, you want to be very gentle when you apply it. These actually come sandwiched in between little squares of tissue paper. And I found that the best way to do this is actually not how you're seeing here, but you put the tissue paper over the foil and then you apply the brush strokes on top of the tissue paper because this stuff is so fine that just the slightest brush can rip it and um, leave holes and it, it could be gnarly. So if you put the tissue paper on top, you have less of a chance of ripping the, the leaf and you'll have a much better um, time getting it to apply. But here you can see, you can just like pick it up with the brush, pick up little pieces and brush it on. And um, at this point, you can smooth it out. You can even see on the left there, it tore, there's a little piece that tore, but um, it can all be reapplied and all the holes can be filled, but yeah, this is a very delicate process. And it was fun, but I, hey, what's that? I got little hands trying to get in on my leaf. Get out of there, kid. 
By the way, no child was harmed in the course of this video. I think I should mention that. Uh, they're always trying to play with my fun things. Mom's toys. Get out of there. Get. Okay, so after smoothing it down, this is what it looks like. And at this point, whenever you have a super shiny object and you want to use a stencil, um, what I do is I use a dry erase marker and because it'll just wipe right off. And I'm going to apply my five divider lines right here because every urchin is actually made out of five segments. I found that out in my research, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so what you want to apply is dimensional dots. And at this point, um, I would refer you to watch my puffy dots video because it'll tell you all the different ways that you can get 3D puffy dots in your work. And in this case, I'm using the Tulip brand matte puff paint as my... Um, as my way of getting puffy dots on this urchin. So add the center dot and then I'm just gonna apply dots over those lines all the way around the stone. So in the center you have your smallest dots and then as you add dots down the lines you just want to apply more and more paint to make the dots larger and larger as they go outward from the center. So perfectionism is the enemy to getting anything done. And I think especially with art, you can't be a perfectionist and expect to be creative. There's something that is magical about that unsure space where you make a mistake and you have to kind of, you know, there's a problem and you have to wiggle your way through it. That's where real growth happens and that's where the magic happens. So I've learned to embrace mistakes and kind of stick with it and don't give up and just see where it goes. Here's a good quote for you. We don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. Bob Ross said that. Okay, now you're just Googling mistake quotes. Okay, yeah, you're right. But hey, me not good at words. But one thing me is good at is making mistakes and learning from them. You know, if there's one thing that I can get across in this video, I hope that it is don't throw away your mistakes. I would say work through them and try and find a way to use your mistakes so that you can learn from them. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to... I'm going to make this fast because this was a mistake. So right now I'm using uh, Liquitex acrylic paint, heavy body acrylics, because I want to get spiky dots. I wanted to add dots that had some texture to them. Now what I did was um, I put them in a cone and I expected that they would just come out like fresh paints. But the, wrong, the problem was these paints are actually old. They're probably about seven years old. So um, they don't have the same consistency that you would get in a fresh tube of paint. I looked on Liquitex's um, website and their shelf life for their paints is five to seven years. And this paint right here, if I had to guess, is probably right around seven, eight years. So it's not behaving like uh, fresh paint would behave. It's coming out all kind of wonky and uh, it's just not squishing out at the proper consistency. So I'm just going to fix that. There's no way I'm throwing away this paint. It's still usable. It may have globs and chunks, uh, but if I add pouring medium, guess what? It fixes it. It gives it just the right consistency 
so that uh, now I can use it. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. You just put one part heavy body acrylics and another part, the same, same amount of pouring medium into the bottle and you mix it up. And now what that does is it liquefies it, it gives it the right consistency, and now I can squeeze it out with my nozzle tips and I get just the perfect dots. So now I switched to uh, a different way of getting puffy dots, which is Arteza fabric paint. And what you wanna do is apply dots right in the center of the two lines that you just did. And you go all the way down, making sure to make the dots smaller at the front of the line. And then as they go down the side, just make them a little bit bigger. Now I switch to the metallic copper and I went in between those sections and did the same exact thing, just applied dots right in between those two lines all the way down. If you do decide to get this Arteza fabric paint, one thing you'll notice is when you apply the paint, it has a lighter color than when it dries. It often dries probably about 10% darker than um, the color that it was when it first is applied. So something to keep in mind. Okay, so now the dots are dry and you can see the color of the paint has darkened quite dramatically. And I am already starting to notice there are things like some of the dots are running together and there's still outlines of the uh, dots that I had washed off previously. So at this point, it's not really looking so good, but I'm not going to give up on it. I'm just going to keep going, see how high I can get those dots and see if I can solve this somehow. Okay, so people ask me all the time, how do you use silicone tools? Well, check it out. This is the easiest way to get rid of mess up dots. You just use silicone tools and you just scrape those suckers right off. And then um, just if I had a Q-tip, I would go in and wipe the excess off, but I didn't at this point. So yeah, this is how you use them. They're great for erasing mistakes. Okay, so this is what it ended up looking like. And some of you might be like, oh, that's, that's nice. But I just, it was funky and I wasn't really happy with it. And I just wanted to use it some other way. So what I decided to do was take some of this rose gold and cover the whole darn thing in, in leaf and just see what happens. Okay, so if you're joining us right here, before you add that gold leaf, be sure to paint your base coat the same color as the leaf that you're going to use. That way, if you get any cracks or if anything tears or if for any reason the base colors come through, it's not going to be as obvious as if you had used red and black paint. So yeah, that's what I would do next time. Okay, so check out this new method of applying gold leaf. So I keep the tissue paper on one side and I apply with the brush very gently, making sure that I get in between all the little areas and spaces. And this way, the brush doesn't tear the leaf 
and it's just a lot of more of a gentle way and then you can actually put it in your hand and squish it all around and there's not going to be any tears or anything now looking at it because it was a dimensional object you can see around some of those dots it is um, it cracked which is expected and which is why I would suggest to you to paint a base coat that you wouldn't mind looking at with the leaf cracks showing through okay so how do I fix this well I'll just add more gold why not Okay, so the same technique, using the tissue paper, using a brush, squishing it, molding it with my hands, and then the final reveal, it looks great. I love it now. And this, is the, this was the turning point for me where I was like, oh, okay, this is gonna be cool. So now it's like a whole different stone from when it started. So in order to apply crystals I use diamond glaze and this stuff dries clear which is great because I was having a problem with super glue and this totally solved that problem I also have these awesome wax pencils which are perfect for applying crystals and they're available at the dotting center of course now I used to use um, gel super glue but I found that the super glue if it got over the crystal in any way it would cloud out all the shine of the crystal and that's no bueno so I switched to liquid glaze and I have loved the results ever since so you just want to place these in the center um, and as far as like the size goes, it just depends on how you, um, how tightly your piece is um, dotted. But these just fit nicely right here. Of course, I placed them dry uh, just to make sure that they would fit and get the size right. And now it's just tweaking the spacing and getting everything to fit in that little space right in the center there. Okay, so that looks good. It's still cloudy because it's wet, but once it dries, all that liquid glaze is going to be completely clear. I think that looks cool. Okay, so now I'm going to use this metallic white Arteza 3D fabric paint because the metallics in this set are fantastic, and this white looks like pearls when it dries. So um, I'm going to go and add little pearl tops to some of these lines. I don't just mess up that very first one, but uh, yeah, your fingers also make really good dot erasers. Okay, so some of that paint got away from me. So here's another example of using silicone tools as, a, as an eraser. I use these all the time. I make sure to make lots and lots of mistakes so that I have an opportunity to use them. And uh, yeah, you see how easy that was? 
Just a very quick cleanup and then I'm on to the next thing. So now I'm going to try another color of the Arteza metallic line and you can see I did a swatch test. That metallic bronze looks like it matches really, really well. So I'm going to use those in the segments right in between the two pearl lines and just go all the way down the sides and see how that looks. So here's a close up and at this point I can tell you that I was having a lot of fun applying these dots. This was awesome because this is the end of the project. This is when things are coming together and I know that it's going to end up looking cool and this was just fun. This is probably the last, you know, 10% of the project where it's coming together, but I feel like this was a whole like uh, you know, the life cycle of this project was something that I learned a lot from. I didn't give up on this little thing and it ended up being one of my very favorite pieces. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed the whole process. So now if you chose to make this same urchin stone you could learn from all of my mistakes and you could make it much quicker and much easier and much better than i was able to do just watch this and see how much easier it'll be when you know all the shortcuts and all of the um all the problems that you can just bypass that's what my hope is at least So now at the end, I decided to go back in to all the lines where I just did every other dot and I just went right down the line and did the whole line covered in pearls just to match and make it look a little bit more uniform. Okay, so the final step for this little beauty is we need to seal the gold foil and that's really important because this is metal and it can tarnish over time. So we want to use this glossy top coat so that it preserves that shiny look. Now, don't get me wrong, I would like to see one all tarnished. Uh, but it's not going to be this project. I'm going to do something else and also hey, don't use your dotting tools to open cans. Gosh. Get a screwdriver. Honestly, Rachel. <sighs> All right. 
So the stuff is clear and you just want to brush it on. Do not go over the crystals because you don't want to lose the multifaceted shine that those things have. You just want to go over every place where there's gold leaf and this will keep it from oxidizing and getting all funky. It's gonna stay nice and shiny looking. So that's what we want. So I hope that in your studio, you learn to love your mistakes and start to see them as opportunities instead of big old bummers. Through this project, we have learned how to apply gold leaf, how to use dimensional dots, how to extend the life of funky old acrylic paint, how to properly seal gold leaf. Uh, I learned how to do a green screen effect, which was pretty funny. Yeah, no, it wasn't funny. And we also learned about silicone tools and wax pencils and how in life you can just cover all your mistakes in gold. We learned that, right? Yeah. So that's quite a bit for one project and it was all because it was so difficult, but it was fun. So if you liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot. Your support means a lot to me. And if you wanna show even more support, come and visit me at the Dotting Center on Etsy and buy yourself some supplies. Thanks again, guys. See you next time.